Hi Dave, welcome back to the Mate Night Podcast. Hi Dave. This week we're diving into a classic that has charmed audiences for decades. We're keeping with our new format, starting with our gut reaction scores and limiting our initial discussions to just 10 minutes. After that, we'll delve into our what if segments for the bulk of the episode and use any time remaining to chat and update our cine files. We have a total of 50 minutes. Today's film is The Sound of Music, a musical drama released in 1965 that captures the hearts with its uplifting story and memorable songs amidst the backdrop of World War II Austria. Ooh. Are you ready to give your score, Freddie? I've got it written down okay. right here. Who's going first? Um, mm, you. Okay. On the count of three? Yes. All right. The hills are alive with the sound of Jamie's score. Three, two, one. Seven point one. Eight point five. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Eight point five. We you, both, are we doing the sound of music? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Your, your reaction was so... It's like, what? 8.5? Well, it's, a, it's purely gut reaction. Okay. It is one of my childhood favourite films. Oh, it's the nostalgia buff. Yeah, well, gut reaction. So I'm allowed to. We watch films that I have l- watched as a child. I grew okay. up on this film. Okay. I still think I put it too high. I was going to put it low. <laughs> I you was literally gonna... just did it. I know, but How I long like... have you had to rethink this? The thing this? is, I'd written down 8.5. And in my head, I was like, "I'm look, I'm doing 8.5. If I'm second guessing it, I'm going with what's written down. And it's 8.5. Okay. So you can shove it up your ass. Okay. <laughs> um, now, I'm going to have to knock it down a bit in the ceiling files just to, just nah, to balance nah, it 8.5. out. 8.5. Look, going into it, as I knew the film very well, I was thinking that was about the number. In my okay. Head. I was okay. like, that's what I'm feeling. And... I thought it was worse than the last time I watched it. Wow. Which was about, which was probably about three or four years ago. Okay. And the time before that one would have been a good, there'd have been a good distance of time. Yep. And I remember, so the last time I watched it, I was very pleasantly surprised by how much I enjoyed it. And this time, less so. I was really pleasantly surprised. By I'm how much surprised 7.1. That is higher okay. than I thought. Here's, here's my thinking Go with on. it, right? Is it's, uh, I was I was very pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Right. When it asked for three hours of my time in a 60-year-old sure. movie with like I, I just musicals, I was, not really your not it's not something I actively go seeking out. Mm. Um but I tell you a funny thing that it brought out of me that's oh. never happened before. So I've never in my entire life, I've never judged it, but I've never understood the art form of dance like at all. Okay. And people are like, oh, it's such a beautiful dance. And I'm like, okay, sure. Yeah, I guess so. Right. It just, it doesn't compute. Any dance. Any at all. It just doesn't compute with me okay. at all. I just, I don't judge it. I'm not saying, oh, duh. no, I just didn't get it. Okay. And then this film, I was like, oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> really? I was like, it's actually stunning. This like the two dances in the, can I just say, I love the romance story. Right. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Wild. yeah. What? Right. I know. Come again. I know. It was the fucking Nazi story. I really hated the war stuff, but it was I, the... I made a three sentence review for you, Freddie, because right. you always ask me why I gave the squad sure. gave, and I never really give you an answer that's thought through. So mm-hmm. I thought I'll give you a little three sentence. Go on. Talk to me. <clears throat> Not my cup of tea. Yeah. But the sound of music charmed me. Not through its dated music, but via its breathtaking cinematography Ooh, yeah. and choreography. <laughs> Ooh. All the that was one sentence with a lot of commas. All right. It even managed a love story that I could appreciate, though it lacked a little catharsis and could have done without the 30-minute Nazi subplot loosely bolted onto the end. Mm. The next sentence I read to Faye, and she went, what are you talking about? I was trying to do like a good analogy, so let me know if this makes any sense all right, to you. All right. Much like a teacup in a museum, okay, I can appreciate that it is important, beautiful, and old, but you will still find me hanging out at the arcade. Right. Okay. So, like, I, I appreciate it, but you won't, I won't be putting it on. Like, I'm not mm. going to go straight back to it, but I can see it's a stunning so the movie. Ro- what, what about the romance did it for you? Because we've, just for it anyone no new bullshit. to this, we've not, we've not found a romantic film that's really really tickled your tickled your past i hate romance stories and it's because they always they're always just so full of like miscommunications and Mm. bs and it's just it's it's not enjoyable to watch a a story that built on like a lie or the lack of a conversation Mm. and this just felt so like 
I was I was invested and I and I was really happy with the outcome and yet the what and the Baroness was cool pro, as fuck. Pro, pro, possibly the goat other woman. Yeah, yeah, she was so cool. What a trooper. Yeah, they were all really cool about yeah. it. Like it was so for me the the Nazi thing was just like why have they put this in this is too long this movie and yeah. you just don't need the Nazis in it. Yeah, well I don't know if your what if is going to be along that line. Mine I didn't do that. Okay. But I did uh, Rachel watched this with me. She hadn't watched this. Okay. Film. And she was like, well, there's the obvious what if of just stop it at the intermission. <laughs> 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 Basically, it's a love story, which yes. which rounds off pretty nicely. It's a great then, love story. just randomly had a whole extra scene. <sighs> but I didn't go for that because I was like, well, where do we go from there in our conversation? It's one of those short what it's if like, What if you just finished it at It'd be a better movie. It, pro- it probably <laughs> I'd rewatch it. Probably would. Yeah. Um, it took a while to get started, though. I thought it, it was 10 minutes before the first, like, actually meaningful conversation. I get that it's very beautiful cinematography, but it mm. took fucking ages to establish. See, I didn't mind scene. all that. I do think that, and it's not up to the intermission, actually. I think you get past the intermission because Climb Every Mountain, I remember that song being after. Mm. Usually in musicals, the first half's a bit more packed when it okay. comes to the songs. Um, but Climb Every Mountain's a bit of a belter, and that came after. But basically up to the point where they're married, if you cut it off there. You but you have about like 40 minutes, maybe 45 minutes of them with this weird Nazi subplot, Von Trapp family singer bit, yeah, which does feel tacked on to the end pretty unnecessary. Like the whole, anything to do with the war. It just it's didn't almost need it. It's almost alien. The reason why that is, is because it's based on a real... Family who did do that. I know. I don't know know. how important the love story was to that side of their their life. But the Nazi stuff is kind of interesting. Yeah. Well, I tell you what as well. The the if you cut out the love story and also just kind of tidied up the the cutting of the start, you Mm. would have like ninety minutes of a quite good love story. But I did think that I learned this new word that I used, catharsis. I'd never, yeah. I never. It was the first time I've ever learned it. So for those who, like myself, might not know what that okay. means, it's the kind of the relief of it finally happening. Yeah, emotional and for me, release. it actually didn't feel like it. W- there was that much romantic tension early on, and it just kind of like halfway through the love story, just kind of then started. And I was like, oh, mm. I, I was, I didn't. They kind of, when they first met, there was a bit of some, it just didn't really, I didn't feel like when it finally happened, I was like, oh my God, we've waited the whole movie for this. It was like, oh, this has been, they've been laying this down for the last half an hour. Yeah, I get you. I think that one of the weaker songs for me is their their love, but when they do their dance and they have that. Um, in the greenhouse. Yeah, in the greenhouse. Which, which song is I it? I love Something that like, scene though. Yeah, I can't well, remember what. Like, it didn't yeah. really do it for me, but you know, we you spoke about this in Casablanca, that, that, Films of that era having that. This is the romantic scene. You can tell because it has a weird blurry. Yes, tint. I knew. And I told you about that. that. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. Casablanca, you're like, oh, really? And I was like, you'll see it, mate. If we do more of these, films, only on the women. Like, <laughs> yeah. Did you only, notice that? It only on the only on the birds. It's just yeah. when it showed that, and it was the same angle as Casablanca. Yeah. That kind of close up just below. Yeah, yeah. yeah. About a third of the screen with their face, mm-hmm. and, and they're like, oh. it's a staple of that era. I Even though they like were kind of they were quite far apart, but like films basically. Yeah, 60s yeah. To, to kind of the, the 40s. Uh, yeah. One question I have for you then, before we go into any of the what ifs, what did you think of the songs? I, I, I personally think that they were like, a couple of them were belters and I can mm. see why they did so well back then, but they felt they felt very old. They're show tunes, they're classic show tunes. Very they're old very... classic show tunes. Uh, and so it was like, you ha- for me, it wasn't, it's it's a bit like watching the movie again. You're not gonna see me get a Spotify playlist out, and any of those are gonna be on it. But I can appreciate they were good. But if you were to put one on your liked songs, which would it be? Oh, I think uh, the 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 one which I knew before it. The these are a few of my favorite things. Mm. What about you? Sixteen going on seventeen. Really? Oh, I like that one. Oh, really? One. Yeah, yeah. Which because there were a couple times it came up. Right? There was one yeah, near the, the end. One with, one. The one with the one with Rolf. Rolf and yeah. Good old Rolf. Good old Rolf. I remember, I remember watching it and seeing him for the first time, and being like, "Is that is he's not like that interested? Is he? I, I don't really. What, I'm not, not really that like, interested in her. Yeah, like he seems. Rachel went. <laughs> why did they get someone who's so much uglier than her? 
Yeah. And I was like, poor Rolf catching strays. Well, her. yeah, but she's not wrong, which is why a it's bit kind of me. Looking. But I think it's because <laughs> it must be hard to find someone who's that a ballroom dancer. Yeah. Clearly. Yeah. He, knew his, he had his moves, didn't he? Well, I mean, I could talk about this all day. We've we've done two and a half hour episodes just chatting like this. So ten minutes. Sh- should we cut, cut it? We are. We have. You can yeah, see the it. clock. Ten minutes. We are done. What so, if? Uh, moving on to our what if it's segment. Me first, is it? All right. We had a few a few potentials there. We we even kind of some alternative what ifs. What if it just stopped? Uh, <laughs> what if the film stopped That's, and everyone was happy? I'm sorry, right? I'm sorry, but that is a bad what if. That would be the worst video ever. <laughs> what if the film stopped? <laughs> now you may stop listening. <laughs> the film would be shorter. <laughs> so. Mine, uh, yeah, obviously I did think of that, but we went in a different tack. It's a plot-driven what-if for me, talking about some of the things that we did manage to discuss in the 10 minutes, so so we'll see what you think. Um, okay, I'm, I've seen the title that I've gone for, and I'm trying to think if there was a better one that's a bit more like, whoa. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go with this, because <laughs> the other one really, it's not even anything to do with the what-if, it's just purely for <laughs> clickbait, so... <laughs> What if Rolf proposed to Liesel? Oh, I like that. Jambo, it- today I've got a really intriguing what if scenario for us to dive into. Um, I've been thinking about the sound of music and there's one aspect that I think that could be changed to add more depth and realism to the story. What if Rolf proposed to Liesel? Instead of Rolf losing interest in Liesel and suddenly, kind of out of nowhere, becoming a full-fledged Nazi sympathiser who betrays the Von Trapps, imagine if their romance continued and became a significant source of conflict. Liesel would find herself torn between her love for Rolf and her loyalty to her family. Essentially, what if Liesel became a Nazi? Oh, mate, that's great. I love that. Yeah, so these are the reasons that I decided to go for this particularly. Um some of the flaws I found with the film. Rolf's character development. So in the original, he is rather suddenly losing interest in Liesel and didn't feel like it was particularly well fleshed out. More, he goes from throwing stones at a window. They are very much on a collision course to getting together to Mm -hmm. now I'm Nazi, Nazi, Nazi. (laughs) You know, I get that the Nazi, we need need to be clear, (laughs) there's Nazis in this, but come on. (laughs) He can still be in love. (laughs) Right? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so his transformation from a charming young man into a cold-hearted Nazi feels abrupt and lacks depth. The jarring betrayal scene. So the scene at the end where Rolf lets the Von Trapps go, but then sounds the alarm. Another thing that I found quite jarring. This isn't so much a character bit, but one of the elements that I, I think we could change with this okay. one thing I change. Um, the underdeveloped Nazi plotline. So this, again, is more an issue with the film that we spoke about I before. The, um, the Nazi threat felt very shoehorned into the latter half of the film. We know that there has to be Nazis because it's based on a real story with Nazis. But what we got was basically a three quarters of a very good love story and then very minimal seed sowing of the Nazi threat that's going to essentially be like a whirlwind of the last quarter of the film. So how do we make that more developed? We can use this love story. Um, And then finally, the realism aspect. So this is more of an, it's not that uncommon of films of that time, but seeing as we are a bit later on, why not use the knowledge we have to have more interesting layered characters? So it's, I felt in this very much goodies versus baddies. The Von Trapps, we're good as gold, white as white. Yep. And then Nazis bad, Rolf bad. Okay. Right. So what about if people were a bit more nuanced? Like this that. is something that you could do by having the subplot actually be integrated into a love story. So how does it work? Secret proposal. So you said, when would this happen? Yes. Any ideas? Uh, my guess is you're going to say like in the first bits of the film. I like, felt the 16 going on 17 is yeah. their like longest actual time together. Yeah. I was toying with the idea of like, having a secret marriage, like a Game of Thrones Ooh. style secret wedding. But I don't really know how those worked in those times. <laughs> I know how they work in fantasy stories. But yeah, okay. So I went, what about 16 going on 17? Instead of them kissing at the end, which was also a bit weird, I must say. Yeah. What about they prop- what he proposes? Okay. Maybe it could be leading to that. 
So another thing in in terms of the storyline, I reckon it's received with some initial positivity. It's in mirroring the sort of um, unrequited, maybe not unrequited, but it's mirroring the love affair between um, Maria and uh, Georg von Trapp. Yep. Like we've actually got the the demi love affair going on with the kids. Quite a nice tie in. Maria's probably feeling some level of sympathy towards Liesl's situation. So at first, I imagine it's it's uh, something that is welcomed. Um, then we can lay some groundwork for some tension. So in the first half of the film, the only real seeds of the Nazism that get laid out are at the party where he has that confrontation with the mm-hmm. character who ends up being kind of the driving force for Austrian Nazism. Whereas... What I'd like to do is maybe have Rolf included in the party because mm. he's Liesel's fiance. Yeah. And then maybe he starts to have the antagonism and more of a scene is built up yeah. from it. So it's still in the first half. We're still, we, we don't have to just have three quarters of the film is Von Trapp love story, then Nazi. <laughs> we can intersperse yeah. maybe an argument at the party. And at this argument... Liesel has to choose. Maybe she goes with Rolf Ooh, at that okay. point. Maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe she goes with Rolf. And then by the second half of the film, there's almost a mini time skip where they're on a month on their okay. long honeymoon. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they come back and Liesel's a bit more... She shaved her head <laughs> and got tattoos all over her face. <laughs> yeah. Liesel's <laughs> turning the party line. <laughs> where did your go? <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry continue. so effectively though yes Liesl shaved her head <laughs> and she's an uber nazi <laughs> she's wearing fucking feet no I, I i don't think Liesl become i don't think we change we don't have to but you could i personally wouldn't say that we change Liesl's character that much yeah, i also okay. think it's good that they don't get married okay. because you have a few options there basically you could say Liesl doesn't go as far as rolf or you could say Liesl then decides to go full Nazi. Mm-hmm. Or you say, mm-hmm. Rolf, does he turn? Does he run away with them? Yeah. If you haven't proposed, you, you've actually put the le- the statement of intent about their you know, matrimony and their relationship mm-hmm. rather than him randomly just ditching her because now the Nazi party is way more important to him. For sure. So now they are, there's more ties both sides yeah. around the whole emotional conflict of it. So... <laughs> She's in this situation and instead of the climactic scene, again, feeling quite rushed. So out of nowhere, okay, this is convenient that we can be the Von Trapp family singers with Max setting us up. I mean, that whole last sequence seems to flash by out of nowhere. Yeah. So in this one, we've had the arguments taking place and maybe the um, maybe Liesl decides that Rolf is going a bit too far with it mm-hmm. and she has to make the decision based on Rolf's actions rather than just one interaction where he's a bit cold to her. She could see he's going too far with the Hitler stuff. She starts to side back with her father and yep. she decides to escape with them. Yeah. Break off the union. And then the climactic scene in the graveyard. Yeah. Now, instead of it just randomly being a bit of a mano e mano between Captain Von Trapp and Rolf. Yeah. It could be Liesel and Rolf, which feels a lot more like a natural reason yeah, for him yeah. to stop and not report them at first. And if, maybe I'll throw this to you, if we were in that situation, or if that was the situation that happened in the film, how would you see it playing out? So you've got the family are escaping in the background mm. with Liesl facing But this time Liesl's there with Rolf. And she's sort of asking him to run away with them, probably. You would expect she'd at least try that to yeah. begin with, wouldn't she? Come come with us. And, and that's it. The difference there is, does he come with them? Because it's, So maybe that's decision. Or maybe he lets them go without sounding the alarm. Yeah. You don't have the nuns don't... That's a funny sequence, so maybe you can keep that anyway. The nuns slashing their tires or yes, removing their, yeah, yeah, yeah. removing yeah. elements of their their cars. Um, but what did just feel kind of weird in that confrontation is, okay, Captain Von Trapp gets the gun out from him. That's fine, but then he just randomly like insults him, sort of, and says, "Yeah, you'll never be one of them." And yeah. then he goes, "All right, yes, I am. I'm going to report you straight away." 
another totally element which agree. I didn't really like. So yeah. I think that would definitely you definitely can change up in that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would make one of the biggest gripes I had was the lack of the tie into the Nazi plot with it. It was so frustrating to me because I was like, this is just not needed. Mm. And it's partly because they didn't do anything in the first act or two to make it relevant, if you know what I mean. And that would have just absolutely solved that and helped with the whole Lisa or Rolf relationship. Yeah. At the, the same time. In this one, it was de- I defined what I didn't like and it was the Nazi subplot. I would have probably binned it if we could have just had a really good love story. Yeah. But this was a real story. And I suppose the Nazis are, you know, they'll sell you some tickets. So let's include them in it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. why don't we make it at least earned? I reckon that, I reckon that Rolf, I reckon that Rolf would have let them go as well. If that, if that, if it would have been a showdown with Lisa, mm. I think it would have definitely, because he almost let them go with, uh, Georg and as far as we know they don't even know each other that like, seems they, they so have one interaction that bit seems weird it yeah. seems weird that he did let them go there because it wasn't did. even Liesl who was the one who decided no. to with him it was so Georg. if he almost did there then you know if it's his fiance yeah I don't know maybe the level of betrayal that he felt from her leaving could make it even worse do you know what I mean mm. like if he was like she's leaving me potentially yeah potentially like that would it, be humiliating it, for him it, it could definitely it definitely needs to be ironed out and well structured but I feel like it just gives you more opportunity I don't think that's a problem with it I think no. that's a cool way that the plot could potentially go is actually what happens is Rolf goes like hang on a minute <laughs> You're about to break off the divorce. No way. You guys are all going to mm. prison camp or whatever. And, you know. And then if that's what happens, then they still run off. Yeah. And just do the same thing. Or they go to the prison camp. <laughs> Maybe. You can be like we a, don't know. Like a Tarantino ending. We, where we, we change know. history. We, we, we murder the Von Trapp, oh, yeah. the singing Austrians. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. That was excellent, that, mate. That was really good. Nice one. All right, looking forward to hearing yours. On to mine. Oh, no. Right, okay. What if the nuns didn't stop the Nazis? Ooh, okay. As the Von Trapps are fleeing the Nazis, at the end of The Sound of Music, they first seek refuge in the convent. Liesel, the eldest daughter, has a love interest turned Nazi sympathizer named Rolf. Mm -hmm. He finds the family and he raises the alarm. This forces the Von Trapps to flee in their vehicle, heading to the mountains in hopes of crossing into Switzerland on foot. The Nazis give chase, but their vehicles won't start. We then discover that two of the coldest nuns in history had masterfully disengaged the Nazi vehicles, Real. giving our protagonists a chance to escape with relative ease. But what if the nuns hadn't managed to pull off this fantastic stunt? What if the nuns hadn't stopped the Nazis? Welcome to my sequel to The Sound of Music, The Sound of Nazi Interrogation. <laughs> <laughs> very nice <laughs> and it, we're going sequel are we we're going sequel or we're going four hour it was quite late in the film we're already three hours deep i figured we'd go for a sequel first we'll make a case for how the events might have unfolded if the nazi vehicles had started and then we're going to explore the implications for the family members okay. do you have any questions no questions let's go okay question number one what happens once the chase begins i've got a little little setup georg is a master tactician Okay. But he's in a civilian car heading for the hills with nine people crammed in. Mm-hmm. His crew is pretty much useless in this situation. The Nazis have two military grade vehicles, weapons if needed, and are carrying fewer and larger people. Is there any way that Georg is getting successfully out of this? I love how you like emphasize the larger people. At least they are. Well, because like fewer and larger. Because <laughs> the, the car is going to be lighter, so it's going to move easier. And. Like his crew is made up of children. <laughs> like he's in so much trouble. He could throw Marta at him or what's the name? Little, he's the little one. Chuck the little one out Gilbert of Gilbert or whatever her fucking name is. Um okay, so it might have lightened the car a little bit. <laughs> what was the what was the question? Is there any way we can come up with where they Gale might actually survive this survive. situation? So there would be the Nazis are right on their tail. Mm. I gave it a small amount of thought and I was like, there is no way they're escaping this situation. Mm. They would head yeah. straight for the hills. Well, I how, mean, how, would you... long do, how long are we talking? 
How long to what between do you mean? them setting off and the Nazis? What was well, it we like? see it, don't what we? Was yeah, it, like? it was like a few seconds. Like, it was like, they are, like, <laughs> they are not even. For, <laughs> like if the nuns hadn't have intervened, they'd have just been like bell- alongside them like instantly. All right. Um, so he could. Uh, it depends how good of a racing driver he is. He could have. Found, he knows where all the narrow streets are, so he could have started we- weaving for them and maybe kind of ditching the vehicles behind. Yeah, the only possibility, I think, is the old, like, um, turn down an alley, turn off the car. Oh. Hope they've gone on, but you have to get enough separation. And how the hell do you pull that off? Because, again, like... And even then, that's still, like... They, they, it wouldn't take them long to think, okay, he's... Ob- like, we would have caught up by now, so he's obviously yeah. hidden. Yeah. And so then they just stop and search. And they'd probably be quite good at searching. They were the Nazis. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If they were good at anything, if good if we've at got anything, to give them credit for anything. <laughs> Listen, I'm not one to give the Nazis credit, <laughs> but they were good at finding. Okay, that's the only thing I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah, I don't think, and I, I guess Salz is it Salzburg? Is that what it's called or something? I guess it's big enough that they could have a little race on the streets. But how many other Nazi cars are you going to pick up on route? Yeah, they were probably near Salzburg, weren't they? Because of the folk festival. So, oh yeah, that's where they were, they were leaving. No, they were leaving the Abbey thing, the the convent, or wherever whatever. that was, and that, that was in town. Yeah, it must have been. Must yeah, because because remember when the kids went and visited? Yeah, so they're in Salzburg. So there's probably a ton of Nazis in there at this point. Yeah, so they probably so they can't head into town <laughs> and ditch them that way, and they yeah, can't head out of town because they just they're going to stay on the roads and just be out outdone by machines or and there's and there's nine of them some very young children oh yeah if you get on foot you're in trouble yeah you're in trouble town they are one let, let's call it how it is they're they're getting captured they're, get, they're getting it good because last time i assumed that we would decide one thing and that's <laughs> not what we did so question two what would have happened to the family now i have prepared an answer but mm-hmm. first i want to get some ideas from you about what you reckon would have happened to these guys after they'd been captured by the Nazis. Well, he was clearly a respect that they clearly needed him Mm -hmm. for their military endeavors. Yeah. Well, they, they were like, we are going to use it. They seemed quite desperate, didn't they? Yeah. So he must've been very good. Must've been absolutely mustard (sighs) as a sea captain. But, um, would he have accepted or would he even force? The only way they'd have got him to is probably keeping his family for ransom. Yeah. Or like keeping them locked up. Yeah. So lock up the family. And then what do you reckon he does? Because he's very principled. I think he probably uh, just does the job. He does the Nazi <laughs> thing. He didn't really like his <laughs> <No>. kids. <laughs> I'm <laughs> too principled. Until like <laughs> Act 3, he didn't like his children in this movie. Uh, yeah, I would say they probably... To be fair... They were pretty reasonable. <laughs> Wait, I have to cut so much from them. The Nazis. <laughs> so, um, I think that I think that they would have probably just said, "Look, we're keeping them under house arrest." And yeah, we're having- yeah. What about Maria? What do you reckon they do with her? Do you reckon they just keep her under the house arrest as well? Uh, what else are you thinking? Well, I've got an answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! What? I love how you went. Oh, I've got an answer. <laughs> I've got a belter like, an answer. Go do, you, do you remember the name I gave this sequel? The sound of Nazi interrogation. interrogation. So ah, you think she's? What would have happened to the family, Freddie? The children. <laughs> The children would be hastily rehomed into less musical, more ideologically aligned families. The Nazis, ever practical, would use the more talented singers as leverage to keep Georg in line. Mm -hmm. Most of the kids demonstrate early on that they have an aptitude for causing pain and misery, as exemplified with previous governesses. Mm -hmm. Based on this, we can safely assume that they would willingly join the Nazi party over the next (laughs) couple of years. The captain, Georg, stubborn and initially indifferent to his children until discovering their international standard vocal talents, likely would have let some of his lesson <laughs> likely would have let some of his less important vocalists die before he chose to operate in the Nazi naval fleet. Eventually he caves when the fate of one of his kids whose names he can actually remember becomes part of the ultimatum. 
Georg receives a telegram detailing the fate of Maria. Ooh. Maria finds herself under Nazi interrogation. However, being Maria, she belts out an ill-timed anthem of defiance. <laughs> While such behavior might be commonplace in Salzburg, her indomitable spirit, coupled with a complete lack of tactical silence, compels the Nazi party to be the first to solve a problem like Maria. This was, <laughs> this was all too predictable, as Maria's energy was clearly going to get her killed one day anyway. Uh, with Georg's family dead or turned Nazi, he complies with the Nazi regime just long enough until he can sabotage their whole war effort and turns the tide of World War II, sinking two of their most important battleships. Oh, very nice. Very nice. So we've got a happy ending. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, we got rid of the annoying ones. Maria's End of the war. <laughs> right. So that's my so, sequel. So, so um, on, on this, uh, <laughs> at the end, this, this massacre. Yes. Who's left standing? Uh, well, Maria's dead. Maria's dead. Uh, Lisa 100% is alive. Yeah. Someone someone picks her up. All the blonde lads are All definitely Nazis. <laughs> like 100%. When we first met them, even before the whole question of Nazis came in, I was looking at them like, these guys are I'm getting them. major Nazi vibes from these kids. They would have been picked up. Yeah, blonde, blue eyes. Yeah. They'd, have been, they'd have been whipped up into the, uh, yeah. the old program. And I reckon they'd have liked it. And they'd have killed it. They'd have loved it. They'd have fit right in. <laughs> they'd have probably kept them... Because of Hitler's eugenic plan, mm -hmm. they were like the archetypes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what was it called? Ar Aryans. The Aryans. So they'd have probably even kept them out of the line of the war. I mean, they were too young to be in the war, actually. Having thought the that. oldest was 14. I checked out for the escape scene to see if there was a chance that he could have helped. But So they were the boys, that uh, the second oldest girl, 100%. <laughs> yeah, she could probably help. <laughs> she was probably already in the Big military. <laughs> She, she's already she's already international fighting and this this is Liesl Friedrich and Gretchen my 50 year old she just showed up on our door one day and just, said I'm one of your kids <laughs> what did you think of the Nazis pretty great right <laughs> yeah I reckon I reckon they're definitely joining the party one of uh, those kids and they yeah. didn't. They didn't once express any sentiment against the Nazis in the film. No, either. they didn't give a shocking fuck. actually <laughs> that they, they didn't. didn't give a fuck. Everyone, they performed for them. No one really did, to be honest. <laughs> apart from the captain, I don't think Maria really. Most cared. of the other characters, like, oh, just just pretend we don't mind. It's like, yeah, okay, yeah Max pretend. Is like, it's all right. <laughs> just, it's not going to be you. You're blonde. That's what I actually had as one part of my original idea. Is what made it. Um, it was pretty unrealistic, his response to it, wasn't it? Georg's. Because even his own family and Max, they're all like, ah, well, the Anschluss is going to happen. Okay. It doesn't really matter, does it? But he was very hardline. Yeah. Out of, like the most principled good guy in the world. Okay. Really, probably just didn't want to serve in a war. Oh, <laughs> He didn't really mind the Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually just don't like being on boats very much. <laughs> I've got terrible sea legs. <laughs> <laughs> we've got some time we've got 15 minutes all right let's do it let's put the old uh let's score this bad boy that was uh that was really funny that's a that's a good sequel isn't it that's that's uh gonna answer a few of the problems you I know what with that one. as well the sequel you could have stopped it at the end of the love story as well and then the whole of the Ooh. sequel could have been the whole nazi plot we're including that. <laughs> I'm going that. Into then it, it not only does it, it, it make a better sequel, it improves the original. <laughs> attempt. And also, That's have you I'm... ever heard of like a one-two punch of films where it's a romance story <laughs> and a Nazi drama, <laughs> Nazi massacre, with political intrigue and subterfuge? Yeah, I. Uh... I actually think that that is exactly what they should have done. The one thing I was thinking was when I was. I was personally criticizing the Nazi plot, same as you. Mm. And I was like, I could just say, what if they just didn't include the Nazi plot and tried to just kind of, you, there would be a few sort, it does tie off a couple of mm. loose ends like Liesl's love story, which like, to be honest, let's just do without. Um, but it, it won like best picture or something, didn't it? And it was, it's mm, been an insanely yeah. well-received film. So I was like, maybe I just don't know what I'm talking about with the in, whole Nazi in thing. It is, it's very long. And it's, you know, 
long films can be really good. Yeah. But this one, when that whole kind of last portion feels like there's almost no point, you feel like you've reached the climax when they get together. Yes. And we haven't really spoke about Nazis other than a few throwaway lines. It's just crazy. Like if I was, you know, being in the middle of, you know, the Second World War era. Yeah. Surely they would be mentioning it. You know, surely they could have done a bit more to make it obvious that there was war brewing. I hundred in the midst agree. of war, they just did not lay yeah. any groundwork for it whatsoever. They like mention it like twice. Yeah, not when... enough. So, yeah, I feel like that was uh, it was a it was a real story adapted to a, a theater performance adapted to a movie. Right? Is that? Is that yeah, correct? so, well, yeah, it adapted to a, a musical, which was theatre musical first. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Real, um, uh, Rogers, I think it's Rodgers and Hammerstein, which they, they did some did some belters. Did they? Mm, what other ones have they done? They did South Pacific, I think. Um, and what other ones did they do? See I do I not know that one. I'm pretty sure they did South Pacific. No, no, I can't see another one here. Uh, that's a, oh, no, that's a bloody... Well, they definitely did South Pacific. There you go. You've got okay. two. Cool. Sound yeah. of Music I mean, is pretty famous. Sound of I've music. not done one famous musical. You can have two. No, not yet, mate. Not yet. Don't <laughs> you feel, worry. I feel like, oh, they might have done Carousel as well. Oh, here we go. Allegro. Oklahoma. Yeah, that, that's like... I've never heard of any of these, like so they four. can't be that good. <laughs> it's four there. Okay, moving on to our final section, the critical score. We're trying to be as objective as we can. We've got seven more categories to rate them in. We're going to take the average at the end. This is really taking into account time. We are not trying to say how much we enjoyed any of this, but just how well-crafted it was. We're going to start with plot. This is always, and it's fair to say, this is always the most complicated one to discuss it's always hard to i was just putting one minute timer on the clock and then you then you're like this is always the most complicated i was like yeah <laughs> we, could, we, could, we, could, we got a big clock as well yeah yeah all right well let's just see how we're getting on with let's see how clock. we're getting on all right um okay so the plot is good for uh, most of it i love the romance story but it could have done but both the romance story there's like an hour at the start Right, where nothing really happens very much. Mm. And they could have set up both the Nazi plot and the love story plot a little more and everything would have been... Yeah, but you got to bear in mind, they do have to have songs. It is a musical. Like they they, they have to have songs in it, which I was is going to elongate. Well, at the start of musicals, they always have like three or four just to just so you you know where you're at. But but do you have to, really? Like, do, is there no way that you can make those songs relevant? No way. Relevant. You have to do the one good in the one. mountains. Good you one. have to do the one, the expositional one about the main character. <laughs> you have to do the one where yeah. she finds her feet. Okay. No, but no, you, no, no. The concentration of songs right at the start does mean it feels like a bit longer, I think, before anything happens. But I think they could have perhaps covered more ground with those songs. Yeah. Like, yeah. they could have introduced a couple of characters in a song or something rather than... So, I reckon, what would you say then? What score would you give up until the end of the romance plot? Uh, oh, I knew that musicals would be difficult. Mm. I really liked it. It was it's yeah. one of the only love stories I've ever enjoyed. That's that's pretty mega. That I don't think it's a ten, but I reckon I could potentially stretch to a nine for the first. Okay, for so the first couple of plots. So you say you for, the first, for the first few plots, <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got the Nazi shit show at the end, <laughs> which is a look. There are it's not the it's not terrible. Yeah, it's it could be worse. It, it would be in and of itself. It's actually better than tacked on to the end of the romance plot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like as a story, yeah. let's say it's just here's a family of musicians, yeah. and then the, the captain used to be a sea captain, and now it's a, a short film, like a forty minute short film. Yeah, it's not that bad, but because it's a, a weird forty minute short film tacked onto the end of a, a quite long love story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah. What's going on here? You've almost got like a nine, and then you've got like a six or seven. Yeah, added onto the end. Mm. Which makes it like a five. Oh, no. <laughs> because it's added on to the end. Um, I reckon, though, all in, eight is great. Oh, that is that is generous. 
Uh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm happy with eight for that. Okay, cool. We can rattle through the rest a little quicker than plot. So character. I really liked Maria. I thought she was Great. really fun. Yeah, glad you liked her. Loved Maria. But... I was sure she was going to get herself killed at some point. Yeah, Rachel was in the same boat where she was because she didn't know the ending. Okay, she's like, if this turns into like a sad, they all got killed by Nazis film. Yeah. She's like, I'm gonna be really upset. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they should really. <laughs> <laughs> they they were all hiding behind a gravestone, and then fucking Maria started singing. I'll be honest with you, love. All right, love Maria. I I really like the captain. Really like Max. Really like the Baroness. Wait, Max. Max is the uh, guy who the uncle, the, the kind of sleazy, yeah, yeah uncle. Okay. But he's the the comic relief sort of, yeah, the witty acerbic one who's trying to get them all to be international singers. Yeah, really like all the nuns. The Baroness. Oh my god, the nuns. The nuns are great. I've never watched a film been like how awesome are the these nuns? nuns? Are sick. They were so cool. <laughs> I like all the characters. The kids are fine. I think the weakest parts of it are the kids. But to be fair, if you just take them as a whole thing, they're all right. I was actually thinking, having just done 12 Angry Men, it was quite interesting watching them introduce seven children mm. and not do as good a job. Because no one does Clearly a good job not as good a job as that. Men. But they still, like, the bit, the moment where they actually did quite a lot for each child's character is when Maria lambasts the captain about how he's doing such a bad job at being a father. Right. She basically one by one goes through all of them and says what they want from their relationship with him. Right. And that was actually quite useful yeah. From a for us as the audience to kind of understand more about each individual. Yeah. Because she actually did like pick apart one by one what they need. I kind of missed quite which a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> Why? I'm quite hard of hearing, I think. <laughs> That's the worst excuse for a movie reviewer I've ever heard. Look, I had three hours of shit to listen to. I missed miss that important expositional scene. Because well, she was going, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, all right, yeah, she's angry. We get it. All right, but we're on character, right? So the only ones who I'm like, meh, is oh, the Nazis are very just, these are Nazis. Rolf, Rolf and Liesel. Are there any well, characters we hate? I I would say the only one that was really in the negative was Rolf. And it mm. and and I tell you what, I would have maybe given the benefit of the doubt because the they kind of wanted that conflict. But after your what if, I'm thinking like, no, he didn't mm. we didn't need Rolf to be Rolf. We could have had more. We could have had more from that character. But okay, so Rolf definitely it's definitely not a ten, but no, but he's the only one that I... The, the there are a bunch one. of characters that I'm ambivalent towards. He's the only one where I'm like, I actively yeah. don't like that character. See, I'm liking the idea of a nine here. Yeah, that's You're being very generous. I think I'm going to have to knock that down one, unfortunately, mate. A nine. Well, a nine. I after your 8.5... <laughs> <laughs> Looking pretty good, that 8.5 right now. Right, so nines, we've got Chinatown, Apocalypse Now, Casablanca, Psycho, Heat, Jaws, Full Metal Jacket. I like, look, there's a lot of very, very good characters. There are no absolute screamers for me. No, wow, Marie is very good. She's Yeah, she's very good. Yeah, okay. There's no, no none of them are tens at all. Mm, yeah, okay, no tens. There's, you need one ten for a nine. I, I, the only yeah. bad one is Rolf, right? Um, uh, uh, what I, I'd even be tempted to go plot seven and then give the give the nine for if we're going to bump one down. Nine for character because dialogue's not going to be good. The dialogues. I'm reluctant to give this film a nine for character. Okay, go on. Eight is great. If we've, we're in dispute, let's go eight. We'll go. We'll go because I, I I feel like there are the the characters are good. Great. The characters are great. Eight is great. <laughs> uh, you know, now I feel better about it. Yes, the characters are great. Cool. All right. That's um, fun. Dialogue. Um, I need your help with this usually. I so don't maybe really it wasn't have. dialogue. I remember thinking particularly the Rolf and Liesel 16 and 17 scene. I was like, wow, this is very, this is aged. But I also, Badly. maybe it was more performance, having thought about it. Okay. Um, I'm never confident with dialogue. Dialogue, what do we have? Like uh, the lyrics in the songs are 
kind of so show tuney. It's also quite hard to judge. I don't have any clue of this. Should we just go sixes mix? Okay. Yeah. I, sixes I think, mix. I think, yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. Uh, performance. Um, mostly very good. I, I thought Julie Andrews was incredible. Obviously, you you get a buff. It was similar to what we were saying. We busted on an animated because I'm sure we've spoken about this before. But um, we did Kingdom of the Apes. Uh, it was mo-cap. yeah that was it mocap mm. where you like you, you get a mocap buff yeah this is like a musical buff where they not only have to perform well but they have to be singing well yeah so that almost is like well you almost get a, an arbitrary one bump i tell that. you what actually i'm i'm willing to agree with you on that and uh <clears throat> one of the gripes with this film that i haven't mentioned yet but you've just reminded me of is based on this mm. is how I'm, I mentioned it in my what if how all seven children mm-hmm. go from first discovering do re mi yeah <laughs> to being like sophisticated broadway harmonies in the next scene yeah Liesel mm-hmm. playing guitar Liesel playing <laughs> Picking guitar. Up guitar pretty quickly um, within, within the span of an afternoon i think which, by the way, she was busy learning how to sing to a ridiculous standard. But anyway, I I do think that I'm not an expert, but I was very impressed by mm. the the performances. And you've in- got the dancing as well. Yeah, exactly. I reckon no nine character, maybe nine performance. I'll go for nine on it's that. It's like it's an eight, but we get the buff for all of the extra yeah. bits they had to do. Um, visuals. Man, it was a pretty film, this. It was stunning. This film, on a few occasions now, has made me really want to go to Austria. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the setting was stunning. The setting was amazing, but every element visually was just ridiculous. The whole the whole helicopter shots yeah. from the start, the whole opening sequence is incredible. All yeah. the way into zooming into... I thought it was awesome. a bit long. Yeah. But, but it was, but visually... Visually... It was it was absolutely jaw dropping. Like there mm. was, and it and it, I tell you what, it is just short of sixty years old now. Mm. Sixty years old it looks fucking good. It, it looks so good. Old. Rachel said that as well. She's like, I can't believe how old this is. It's just the 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 comp- Every single shot was a, a photograph in its own right. Yeah. Like it was just perfect artistically. So yeah, I think uh, I, I mean, like, does it get a ten? Uh, I wouldn't say so because again, tens really have to be reserved for like these are best in class. Yeah, but I'd be I, happy I, with a I, nine. I, I, could, I could potentially go ten myself, but I'm happy to go nine. I'd say nine. Sound ten. Is there any reason why we wouldn't give it a ten? I think if we're being objective, the only reason we wouldn't is if you didn't like the songs. But yeah, okay. Like the the. I love the songs, right? And as someone who likes musicals as well, these are like show tune classics. Yeah. And, you know, it's the sound of music. Come on, God. Yeah. God give, yeah. I think yeah. it's got to be a 10, I think. Okay, cool. And Impact? 10. Yeah, it's got to be 10, hasn't 10. it? 10. Maybe this would be uh, one potentially the most famous musical of all time. It's certainly up there. It's in a, a short list, if it's not your number one, most famous. <laughs> This is going to be one of the best films, one of the highest rated films we've done, you know. Okay, so let me get my script up. Okay, I can't find it. So we have now rated <laughs> The Sound of Music 1965 in nine different categories. We have rated it the following eight points. Where am I? Sorry. <laughs> Oh, it's not. I was looking at the wrong one. Right. We have rated it the following. 8.5 out of 10 for Fred's enjoyment. 7.1 out of 10 for my enjoyment. 8 out of 10 for plot. 8 out of 10 for character. 6 out of 10 for dialogue. 9 out of 10 for performance. 9 out of 10 for visuals. 10 out of 10 sound. 10 out of 10 impact. Giving it an average score of 8.4 out of 10. Making it the... Ninth greatest film of all time until further notice. Yeah. That puts it probably about the 25th percentile mm. of all the films we've done. And bear in mind, we've done like the Godfather. We've done Belters, like, yeah. Yeah, like we have done. Hey, I, I said 8.5. I'm happy. 
I reckon it's a great film. I would give it lower if I could redo it, but I did write that down. So honestly, still, great when, film. when I gave it the 7.1, I, I, I was being brutal with my written review because I wanted to make it a three sentencer, <laughs> right? But one of the things that I wanted to say was I'm giving it a 7.1, but it's a better film than 7.1. It's just, I Your didn't film. enjoy it that much. Mm. Like I won't be going back to it loads, but fuck, it was a very good film. And for me as well, it was, I, I maybe overdid it because I just didn't quite enjoy it as much as I had, but very up until very recently yeah. when I watched it, then I was like, wow, it was like team America for us. You know, when you said, I didn't quite enjoy it as much, but I've watched it so many times. I have a strong feeling. Yes. I'm happy giving it a higher score. Absolutely. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Thanks for listening, Dave. Cheers, Dave. Cheers, Rachel. Cheers, James. <laughs>